This fast fashion retailer stock has been decimated over the last two years. Now, the question is whether or not this company can get back to its all time highs. And that company is Boohoo. At roughly 50p a share, if this stock was to soar back to its all time highs, that could mean an 8x on your money. But is this actually realistic? My name is Sam and I've been investing for over five years now. And as a previous investor in Boohoo, we're going to determine or whether or not I should be jumping back in or this is one to stay away from. So let's get into it. First, we need to talk about Boohoo's recent challenges because the Boohoo share price chart has looked absolutely terrible. But in fact, it's actually slightly not as bad as its rival ASOS, which has seen their shares fall 67% in the past year. Now, the online retail sector is facing big challenges as a whole, and many investors could feel that it's undermining Boohoo's long-term profitability. And inflation has driven up those costs and a recession threatens to cut consumer spending on non-essential clothing purchases. To add, postal strikes and logistic challenges have also added to the difficulties in running this profitable business. Meanwhile, rivals like Sheen has also threatened to undercut existing retailers on price, and this could lead to a lower profit margin throughout the whole sector. And this won't just affect Boohoo, this will affect other competitors. So moving on now, let's talk about what Boohoo do. So Boohoo Group through its subsidiaries operates as an online clothing retailer in the United Kingdom, rest of Europe and United States and internationally. Now the company designs, sources, markets and sells clothing, shoes, accessories and beauty products for the 16 to 45 year age. And it provides products under the Boohoo, Boohoo Man, Pretty Little Thing, Nasty Girl, Miss Pap, Karen Millen, Coast, Oasis, Warehouse, Dorothy Perkins, Wallace, Burton and Debenhams brand. Now let's break down Boohoo's financials. Let's see how these key brands integrate into the numbers in terms of Boohoo's growth. So now let's talk about the good, the bad and the ugly behind Boohoo's financials. So firstly, when we break down the income statement, we can see that their revenue has been very strong, ranging from 579 million in 2018 to 1.8 billion in the last 12 months. And that's roughly a 40% compounded growth rate year over the year which is absolutely fantastic now the second thing which has been very impressive is boohoo's ebitda this remains very strong ranging from a hundred million to kind of 80 million in terms of the last 12 months now following on from that another good thing when we take a look at their balance sheet is the cash and cash equivalents. They range from around 150 million to now 300 million, which gives a little bit of leeway in terms of pressures with inflation and other costs that could be coming out. Moving on now, let's talk about the bad because there is a lot of bad in Boohoo's balance sheet. Now, firstly, let's talk about the weighted diluted shares outstanding. They've gone from 1.5 million to now 1.2 million in terms of the last 12 months. Now, considering the growth, you could probably justify this, but it's not what we want to see as a shareholder. We don't want to be diluted. We want to be seeing those shares remain fairly consistent. Now, the second thing which is extremely bad that's been growing has been their selling and marketing expenses. They've gone from 126 million in 2018 to now almost 500 million. And that's been weighing in on the company's profitability. So on to the ugly now. Boohoo has gone from zero debt in terms of 2022 to now 325 million in the last 12 months. And this explains the cash position going from 100 million in 2022 to 300 million in, tw in the last 12 months. Now, another disastrous thing that Boohoo has happened is their infantry. They've gone from 48 million in 2018 to now 270 million in terms of the last 12 months. And in a recessionary environment, this is not what we want to see. We want to avoid capital intensive businesses that will have to liquidate their infantry if it's not selling fast. So this is absolutely what we want to avoid at all costs. Operating margins have also been extremely poor in Boohoo's case, ranging from around 7% and they've been declining year over year for a while now. 
and their last 12 months, they were actually negative at 0.5. And this is probably where the selling general and admin expenses are weighing in on the poor gross margins of Boohoo's business. And this is going to impact the profitability of Boohoo as long as their cash flow as well. Now, if we take a look at their cash flow, we can see their cash flow has actually gone negative. They were producing cash flow in 2021 when things were good at 125 million. But since then, they've gone from 219 million negative to now 54 million in terms of the last 12 months. Now let's talk about the final nail in the coffin and that's Boohoo's return ratios. Now they used to be very strong, return on assets are around 10% compounded. Now when we talk about the last 12 months, they are now negative at 0.5%. And this is exactly the case for the return on capital and return on equity. They were used to range from around 23% to now negative 1.1% and same with return on equity, 8.1% negative in the last 12 months. So this is disastrous as someone who's looking to get into Boohoo as a shareholder, as that means our money isn't going to yield a profitable result in terms of the money that they're actually allocating. Now, in summary, Boohoo's balance sheet shows the impact of the recent challenges that have weighed in on Boohoo's poor performance. On face value, they look extremely ugly, but the question is whether or not Boohoo can get back to that previous levels that it used to do. And I have my doubts. To add when we have articles that a CEO's salary is growing and then also the supply chain issues, the reputation of this company is clearly not in a strong place. Is Boohoo a value trap? Well, it could very well turn out that Boohoo is a value trap. It may look cheap in terms of relative to historical earnings, but if the profit margin of Boohoo stays this low, then we're talking about a company that is at $500 million in terms of its market capitalization. And that means that Boohoo may not even warrant that due to these low margins and low profitability levels. But I do remain upbeat about the outlook for this retailer. It has a proven business model that has been highly profitable in the past. Now the company has been focusing on managing its costs and this could hopefully help boost the margins that have been so poor as of late. I'm hoping that inflation eases off over the next year and consumer sentiment starts to come back for this company. Hopefully once the economy improves, those profits can then come back and we can see share growth price in this company. As someone who used to be a Boohoo shareholder, this is a perfect example of a stock where you have to be aware of the macroeconomic challenges that it is facing. Now that allows us to know whether or not we need to be in the stock or out of the stock. And for me, this stays on the watch list until we see real macroeconomic improvement. And this translates into the financials then we can potentially look at starting a position. This also ties in with Warren Buffett and what he says. As much as we are long-term shareholders, we don't want to be buying businesses that have high intensive capital and a high inventory business. In terms of capital intensive businesses, they're just not as good if you can find an equally good business. <laughs> I mean, in terms of operations, that doesn't require capital. I mean, they're, you know, the uh, C's never, C's never, re required capital it didn't grow but it's but it's it's it just doesn't it didn't take money to expand it and that's because during business cycles they struggle much harder than other businesses and we want to keep light asset inventory just like overstock now this is why i believe we need to be keeping a close eye on boohoo because that can change very quickly and if this company starts to improve then as a long-term shareholder there could be some value here but short term it's definitely looking very dangerous if you guys enjoyed this video and you want me to cover a few more uk stocks make sure to leave a comment below now if you haven't already like and subscribe the video plus i've just added a patreon account which has a link in the description so thanks for watching guys and i'll see you guys in the next one